Hello, everybody. This is Ming Chen. Hi, I'm Mike Zapsik from AMC's Comic Book Man. And you're watching AFK, the AFK show, our favorite show on the planet. One of. One of. One of. One of. So you're, you're, you're watching the right show. Keep watching and keep watching. And keep watching. And keep watching. Don't stop. <laughs> We're going for Nicholas Brendan. Hello. Awesome. Hey, hey, hello, 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 hey. So this is a buff this is a panel of, of five people, but I'm only here right now, so it's kinda you're, crazy. You're very important to, to all Yeah, no, I mean I just don't understand why people I Fuck it, let's get this thing going. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's ready to go. Y'all ready to go? Oh, there, there come two now. That's, thanks for showing up, guys. Excellent. Have you seen? Have you seen the other people? <laughs> yeah. So what? We got. We're missing Claire. We're missing James. I am not missing my avocado. That's wonderful. Have you met my baby, Avocado? Where did you get that avocado? At the green room. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, yeah, really. Is it ripe? Is it a ripe avocado? Hello, everybody. <laughs> well, let's just, I guess let's just go ahead and uh, introduce yourselves. Uh, sure. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Owen, everybody, by the way. I know y'all didn't come to see me, but. Uh, What's your name? My name Owen. Hi, Owen. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm James. Not that James. Not that. <laughs> James Leary, correct? Correct. Correct. James Leary, let him hear it, everybody. <laughs> Excellent. Let me get my cheese. And uh, George? George, what's your name? Hi, my name is George. George. <laughs> Hertzberg. George Hertzberg, everybody. Played Adam. Yes. Yes. The yes. cyborg demon. Yes. So right. just, just out of town today? Houston. Just out yeah, of town. Houston's your hometown? Wow. Yeah. Houston is his hometown. I did not know that. <laughs> Welcome home. Houston with vodka. Tap it. Excellent. <laughs> that, is a, that is a good looking avocado. Fucking up. I love it. That avocado. is a tasty looking avocado. I love it. Take it below the table. Ooh, mm. Who likes avocado? Does anybody here like avocado? <laughs> Throw the, throw the seat out in the audience. I'm sure someone would want that. that. That's a lawsuit <laughs> waiting to happen. <laughs> that is a lawsuit. Somebody's going to get an avocado Someone's seat. Someone's going to get litigious. <laughs> that, that's an ultimate uh, souvenir, though. Drive you can by grow avocado. a Xander. Uh, a, a Xander slurped a avocado. Yes. Would anybody <laughs> like a Xander slurped <laughs> avocado? How much do you think that would go for on eBay? That'd be nobody. Sorry, bro. <laughs> I was trying to give away the Xander Slurped avocado. Oh, yeah, no, that's going to happen. <laughs> we'll have a raffle for that. And might I add, that's a knife, too. That's not even a spoon. That's, no, it's that's a knife. A... I'm good with a knife. <laughs> not really. Uh, all right. So... It's a nork, a knife and a fork. A nork? A nork. It's like a... Is that of a K actually in the spelling? A, a knork? I don't, I don't know. know. The, the, the K is silent. A kaspork. Yogging from Soft J. Let's see. All right. So, um, should we take questions? Yeah, we'll go should ahead we and take questions. Uh, who do we? Have? All right then. Thank you. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? Yeah. I don't believe you. How's everybody doing today? Oh. I still don't believe you. How is everyone doing today? <laughs> I think That's have, better. I think we have James and, and Claire. And here's James and awesome. Claire. Awesome. Hey, guys. How are you? 
James Marston and Claire Kramer, everyone. It's a pleasure. Grab a seat. We don't even have my avocado. Yeah. Here, grab a, here, you can have mine. Here, you can have mine. Oh, we got that. Oh, here. Gra gra grab a seat. Please. I'll just sit here. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Not for you to sit on my lap. That'd be kind of weird. I got it. Here, here. All right. Oh, okay. Well, one of, oh, thank you so much. Look at this. So, oh. Okay, Georgia. Oh, Georgia's so, okay. Avocado? No, 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 thank you. you don't Excellent. Like avocado? I do like avocado. Usually on something else. No, it's just the best way to have it. Okay. <laughs> okay, can I, can I just a little caveat today? This is just for me, but you guys can ask me anything that you want. Try to embarrass me. It is not possible. <laughs> Do I get to ask you any questions? Yes, but later, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, does that go for us, too? Seriously, I, will, I, will not, I don't promise to answer anything you sickos ask. But that, that time we woke up in Amsterdam and you said nothing happened, was that true? <laughs> that, I've never been to Amsterdam. That never happened. All right, so uh, does anybody have any uh, questions for these guys? This is great. Yeah, we have right a microphone. Step right up to the mic. Uh, right up front, we have a mic right up front. If anyone has any questions they want to ask. Awesome, we have our first question. What's your name? Hi, my name is Dana. Dana, okay, yes. Dana, what's your question? Okay, my question is, were any of you um, fans of this kind of genre of show before you did Buffy? And if not, did doing Buffy make you interested... <laughs> Sorry, bad way to ask the question. But did acting on Buffy <laughs> make you interested in the genre, or is it something you can take it or leave it? Acting on Buffy made me interested in Buffy. <laughs> and also Glory. Because, <laughs> you know, I don't, like, and then there were a lot of shows that were kind of trying to, they, they kind of opened up, uh, with, like, a whole cadre of, of that kind of stuff, and it just it wasn't Buffy. So how do you start with the best and then settle for the rest? I didn't. I just, I just stuck, stuck with the best. Good answer. Um, I, I was actually a fan of the show. Um, so when I got to L.A., it was one of the top five shows I wanted to work on, and it was the only one of those shows that I got to work on. But uh, no, it was a, it was a blast. I think Dawson's Creek. It was, it was the 90s, man. What do you want? Um, uh, maybe West Wing, I think. Friend, well, yeah, Friends, uh, maybe Seinfeld. I think no, Seinfeld was off by then, so probably Friends, West Wing, Buffy, and um, Spanish soap operas. Spanish sitcom. <laughs> it's a sitcom, George. It's a sitcom. I was, I was um, in 1975, no, three, four. I was at a Star Trek convention in Oakland, California, one of the first ones, dressed with pointed ears, a blue tunic. <laughs> a phaser that I made myself, and a big blonde afro. And I was beautiful for the first time in my life. I fell in love with genre very early, yeah. Did you get pictures of that? Hell no! That's it. They were Polaroids, they faded. Uh, wasn't a fan before. Mm. And I'm not a fan now. <laughs> and I'm not a fan now. No. Um, Nick's, insert Nick's quote. Insert Nick's quote. The writing is just phenomenal. How can you not be a fan of incredible writing regardless of the genre? So, yeah. Uh, anybody else? Great answers, guys. All right. Uh, what's your name? Hi, I'm Gabe. I'm sorry? I'm Gabe. Gabe? Yes. Okay, what's your question? Uh, well, I wasn't going to say anything. Because anything you said try to embarrass you. Yeah. So... I'm going to ask what I asked Nick yesterday. What is the strangest thing that you have been asked at a con? The strangest thing. What is the strangest thing I've been asked at a con? My idea of strange <laughs> is so strange that my answer to your question is I have never been asked anything strange That's why at a con. Now trying I'm, to have you asked that. All right. I, 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 can't, I can't, like, uh, people say, like, when I say try to embarrass me, they say, Who's a better kisser, John or Sarah? I'm like, 
<laughs> Obviously, amazing. John. What did, come on. You know, like, that doesn't even. Right. Then this probably won't phase you at all. But may I touch I'm your face? I'm way sicker than people think that I am. So, yeah. so, so can I touch your face? What? Can I touch your face? Can you touch my what? Face. My, oh. I thought there was two syllables in there. And I, <laughs> I'm married, baby. But the face, yeah. Yeah. All right. It's that big it needs two syllables? <laughs> yeah. Face. You got to come to me, though. Too late again. I got okay, it. Gonna get a bunch Next of person. Post that on questions. So, so how does that rank in terms of the strange question scale? Oh, that was cute. <laughs> I'm, I'm just checking in because he threw the gauntlet down, um, and I'm um, like, James, I make sure James, happens. James, can, can I touch your face? No. <laughs> you gotta wash first. Oh, all right. Uh, what's your name? Hi, I'm Josh. Josh. All right. What's your question, Josh? Uh, my question is, y'all have had a bunch of spin-off material from Buffy, the comic books, the books, the video games, all of that. Two-part question. One for all of you. Which one's your favorite? Two, is there anything you didn't get that you're like, there should be a Buffy blank, and there isn't? Let me, let me ask you guys something. Here. Are you guys having trouble hearing in the back with the mic? Okay, the mic, the, can we turn the mic sound down? Because I think that it's, it's reverberating so bad, I don't think people can really hear. Is that true? Okay. Do we need to protect? <laughs> We'll all have no voice. <laughs> okay, so the, the question was, there's been a lot of spin-offs. Have we been, is there something more we'd like to see? Is that true? I think, it, like, I think like, a, like, a, like a Xander pregnancy like kit or something like that, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, exactly. Like you, like you have to put three, three drops of piss on Xander's face. And if he, if he grows an eye patch, then you're pregnant. If he doesn't stay the same, then you're not pregnant. <laughs> If another picture of his face shows up, and, you're and, having and, twins? And twins okay. or multiples. Yeah. 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 If he disappears, see a doctor immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Spike condoms. Spike, spike condoms. condoms. <laughs> I don't want spike and condom at all. I, I, I want that thing to stay taut. Yeah. To me, a spike <laughs> will go right through that. <laughs> So don't use those. Just, clam just, just, just collect all the colors. We just got to make sure that we remember. There's probably kids in the house, yeah? Uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, whatever. Are there? I, yeah. Just a disclaimer. It's right there. <laughs> okay, so let's just let's just make sure. Children. We haven't over the line yet, have we? Okay. No. Not yet. Close. Hey, I almost had an action figure, and I and I want that. They made a promo, a little uh, what you call it of it, and then the company switched hands to somebody else, and apparently it's sitting on a shelf someplace. Oh no! You they did, did the that. I. I I don't have that status. It's above his pay grade. Yeah. Yeah, but I tried. I know. I got you. All right. Uh, yeah. Anybody else? Question? Okay. All right. This is for James Marcy. What is your favorite Buffy episode? My favorite? My favorite episode. There was a lot of really good ones. Uh, I think the musical. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The reason that the, 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 the reason that the musical is my favorite, and maybe you guys remember this differently, but I don't remember any of us having any faith that Joss could write music. <laughs> uh, he gave us a cassette tape um, of him and his wife playing the music. And Joss is a genius, but he's not that good at piano. <laughs> And he's not that great of a singer. I'm sorry. So his songs didn't really sound that wonderful when he was singing them. And so we thought that Joss had gone insane and that he, the pressure had gotten to his head and that he was going to flush the show down the drain along with all of our careers. And so we went from, from just abject terror until he edited Xander's uh, Nick's Dance with Anya and that was just awesome. You guys just kicked that. And, and then suddenly we went, we went from just, we are all doomed to, oh my God, this is awesome. 
like in one one moment. And so, yeah, that's my favorite. Okay, since Nicholas gave me a hug yesterday, can I have a hug from you? Mm, yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Very nice. All right. Uh, what's your name? My name's Vanessa. Vanessa. Hi. Very nice. What's your question? Uh, well, I'm going to monopolize James some more. Um, I read an a interview with you just recently. Um, you were talking about how you used to like to mess with Sarah on, uh, on the set. Oh, yeah. Can you give us some examples of some of the things? Yeah. This yeah. is my favorite story with Sarah. So, um, <laughs> there's so many. This is, well, okay, this is not my favorite, but she would always want to, like, offer me candy. Like, oh, taste this candy. It's special. Like, had it brought in, and I always would be like, nah, not hungry. And it would just depress you. Really? No, no. You don't want my candy. Um, she was a sweetheart. So uh, I was, in one scene, I was, like, lifted up off the stage floor, all the way up on the ceiling, like 17 feet um, horizontally, like that. And I was, they, everyone explained to me that that was going to be a really horrible day, very painful for me to have to be up in the air like that. And uh, I got into the rig, and they had put a belt on the stomach portion, which meant that the rig was a breeze. It wasn't painful. It was fine. But I didn't tell anybody that because I wanted to get the credit <laughs> for being so tough, right? So they hoist me up there, and I'm... I could be up there all day. I got no problem. Yeah, take a nap. And um, Sarah comes in. The first shot is over my shoulder, down to her face. So it's basically a, a special on Sarah. And she looks up at me right before we roll. She goes, I think I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and I go, well, baby, you go ahead. It's your show, you know. It's called the Buffy Show. It's not called Spike the Vampire Slayer. Why don't you go into that trailer, that huge trailer of yours, and you take that bathroom break? Because, you know, you need to be comfortable. It's your shot. She's like, no, I was just kidding. I'm like, no, man, seriously. You got all those channels on that direct TV thing you got in your, in your big old trailer. Why don't you just take a nap in there? It's okay. And we went back and forth, and finally she got mad enough to leave. <laughs> At which point... At which point, all of her, like, her makeup people and wardrobe people came in one at a time and tried to talk me down off the rig. And I just, I wasn't going to move. And then finally, about 25 minutes later, she came back. She's like, I'm ready now. Sorry. And I just totally got her. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. Awesome. Um, uh, well, this is kind of sort of multiple questions, comments, because I've actually met three fifths of you at the um, Wizard World um, Comic Con like a few years ago. Um, James, Nicholas, Sinclair, and I have a picture with you too. Um, uh, so, um, well, first, uh, just the, just like the, it's, that's funny about the 70s thing because I was going to be like, well, so you weren't killing Robin Wood's mother in the 70s. <laughs> Um, uh, okay, uh, I have, I have a small one for George Hertzberg and then a big one for everybody, I guess, that came to me. Yeah, um, kiss that mic like a rock star, man. Okay. Just put your lips on it. Okay, right. um, oh, oh, wow. <laughs> don't, don't worry, we all feel like that. have a pillow cord and whatnot. <laughs> How was that filming that? Because that's just, I mean, that whole episode's like crazy with the like cheese man and everything. But it, I just remember that scene and that's like the only time you're not in in like the full Adam Frankenstein cyborg stuff, demon stuff. And so I was just wondering how it was filming that scene since it was so weird. That was awesome. <laughs> so from four and a half hours in makeup to about seven minutes, it's like, oh. I had pre-dawn calls, like dark outside, to be set ready for 
9 a.m. So that was awesome. That was a fun episode to work on. Oh, and I know that I'm such a Buffy fan that when you said three dong balls, I was <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that's so funny. I think it was, I think it was something. <laughs> Which yeah. technically. Yeah. All the lights or six something. Can't hear yeah. Anything. Can I give you a hug? Um, and this is kind I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't hear anything. anything. We're literally not here when people are asking. So we just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Then we're okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I don't think uh, that's going to help. This is so cool. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So um, this is kind of like, what's your favorite line by your character in all series, basically. And I guess for James, for you, that would also count Angel 2 or Angel meets both your favorite Buffy and Angel ones. <laughs> all right, the question, though, what's your favorite line from what your character? Uh, my, my favorite one was, uh, it was in Seeing Red and when I came into Spike's crypt and we were talking about Buffy and I was like, hey, Spike, she is a sweet girl, but issues. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think the one that stuck with me most of all that I, uh, was, was when I was Renfield and I was talking to my master. Oh, this is not please the master. <laughs> Vader. It's like, oh, then I say something about the Dark Prince. Vader. Just like that. Uh, I think my favorite line was when in the last episode I kicked off Buffy's head and, and, and then I said, did anyone else know the Slayer was a robot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> it's a good one. Out. A walk, bitch. <laughs> Mother. Yeah. Mother. Somebody brought it to my attention today, where it's uh, where it's like like there was the one where um, they could read the minds or whatever, and it was like you know uh, uh, four times five is thirty, you know. That was me. Yeah, thank you. I I, I totally forgot. It's like you know. Uh, naked girls, naked Buffy. It's like the fact that I'm doing math that poorly. Yeah, four times five is 30. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. And on, on 17, linoleum gets me horny. <laughs> that's that's a good one. Like, Danger tell it goes away. Has anybody seen my spleen? Awesome. You got to dis... I'm everybody's foot monkey. I, the guy that gets the fun in syphilis. You got really got a disproportionate amount that of good my, lines. That was my job. Yeah, that I know. Was the yeah. 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 <laughs> Hello. Hi, Hi, everyone. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Um, I've had a lot of fangirl moments here today, as I'm sure a lot of people in this room have. And it, right? <laughs> so it leads me to my question. I wanted to know what is your most memorable fan moment, good or bad? Yeah, you have to. Leave. I mean. Uh, I'll, I'll kick this one off because I'm sure that everybody up here has a lot of memorable moments. Um, it, recently at Emerald City Comic Con, there was a marriage proposal during one of my Q&As, which was very memorable and special to me, and I was honored that they chose that moment to dedicate their love for their significant other. So that was pretty unique and, and awesome. Oh, uh, I would say, I mean, there's been a ton um, I would say any time that anyone has ever come up and said how much the show meant to them and that it helped them get through a really tough period in their life, that means the world to me as an actor, just to know that something you were a part of helped someone. So that's that's for me. Yeah, I think every single one of my fan moments is memorable. Every single one. Yeah, we're actually in competition with each other to try to come up with the best. Uh, you, just, you just beat us there, dude. Like, like Follow insane. that. I got to meet uh, the, uh, the person who works at NASA, uh, no, at the Jet Propulsion Laboratories in uh, Pasadena, who helped design the Mars rover, Curiosity, and who could point out um, the International Space Station at any moment in the sky. If it was night, of course. He'd be like, yeah, it's right there. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah. So, yeah, fans are cool. They have cool jobs. Yeah, I would say there's so many fantastic, memorable moments. James said it right. There's just, you, 
get to meet incredible people with incredible lives, with incredible stories. Um, however, the most memorable for me would be, um, I believe it was London, England, where a, a gentleman and his daughter came up and the girl said, show him, Daddy, show him. And uh, he lifted his shirt and showed me his back where I was tattooed. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere on his uh, right lower quadrant, nor north of uh, Buttsville, and uh, north of your anus or his anus, <laughs> that too. So yeah. there you are. You will live on, brother. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if he's like, what the fuck? Like today, it's like, yeah, like how do you get like a George? How do you get rid of a George Hertzberg yeah, like, tattoo? Jesus I mean, Christ! Like, what do you do to get rid of a George Hertzberg Man, tattoo? I gotta stop going oh. to the pub. It takes a lot. Trust me. Uh, I could turn this into Poland. I could turn <laughs> this. In, I mean. What is it's, All right. a it's a very tall tattoo. The old Ukraine. <laughs> All right, what's your name? Oh, I'm Megan. Megan? Um, what's your question? <laughs> uh, I guess uh, for James Marsters and Nicholas Brendan, what was the uh, hardest episode of Buffy in terms of preparation and in execution for you to film? Ooh. Uh, oh, man. Uh, that's a serious question. <laughs> what were you thinking? You kiss your mom with that mouth. Man, that's... Oh. I, I suppose it, in terms of... I, I think the, the, the musical, just because there, there was go. the added... We had yeah. to... Re, like, we were done shooting whatever episode was before the musical, and then yeah. we had to go to rehearse, and we really did have to take that CD of Joss and, and Ty singing <laughs> and pretend like it was our favorite CD of all time because we <laughs> needed to know it backwards and forwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was an episode I remember... Um, I... My character was very, uh, he was very trippy. He liked to fall a lot. Um, and there was, a, there was an episode, I, I forgot where, we, I was going down into a crib. It may have been, uh, it may have been the Zeppo, it may have been the replacements. It was the replacements. And I just kept tripping on, on this crib and falling down the stairs. And instead of false tripping, I actually wanted to kind of take my foot and hit it on the, the concrete little paver. So I really could kind of get the momentum of the crib. Now, that... Oh, it's lost. And like, I feel it hurts right now. I have to get a pedicure like every two weeks because <laughs> I run a lot. And it just kind of it. Just sure, hurts. that's the yeah, reason. It, really, it hurts. Did everybody catch that he gets I a really, pedicure I really every two have weeks? That foot up. <laughs> yeah, so get pedicures all the time, but not at the Four Seasons. It's kind of expensive. Over there. I hope you tip well because that toe is <laughs> nasty. <laughs> I remember one time uh, I messed myself up on a, on a gag once, stupidly, when I, oh my, I was supposed to catch fire. And I let the gag go twice as long as they told me to because I thought it would be more funny that way. And I burned myself really badly. Luckily, it was the only episode I was in. It was season four, and that was the last shot, so no one found out about it. But my entire hand was covered in, in, in blisters. Yeah, it was just, it was so gross. Uh, but I never, I, n I never admitted that um, while the show was filming because I knew that if they knew that I blew that one that badly, they wouldn't let me do anything else. Yeah. There was one in Teacher's Pet, too, where I decided to do my own. Uh, this is when they still allowed us to do our stunts because I don't think. <laughs> and, like, at that time, nobody really knew what they were doing. Um, so it, there was an episode where the, 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 the soon-to-be praying mantis, beautiful teacher woman, dragged me downstairs and threw me into the basement, and I rolled down the stairs. And I'm like, fuck that, I'll do that. I did that as a kid, with, you know. So they put, they put me in a back pad. And, uh, and, and at the time, my character, I, I thought Xander should have a ring on every finger, which I'm trying to figure out why still. It was the late 90s. And, um, yeah. and so I go down, and I do like a head over heels thing. And I'm like, holy shit. I'm out of control right now. And all of my fingers, all, all of my, the rings flew off of my finger and embedded themselves into the concrete wall, which is made out of wood. Uh -huh. And I'm like, I never want to do that again. What was I thinking? So that was terrifying. I had to eat chips with fake teeth. <laughs> that was really hard. All right, uh, what's your name? My name is Rachel. Rachel, what's your question? Um, so one of the most iconic things about Buffy is the language 
and the cadence in which everybody speaks. Now, as for those of you who have seen the movie, um, if you don't know what you're doing, it doesn't necessarily deliver as well. So how did you guys master that cadence and make it sound like second nature? Later. <laughs> Very good. I think the, the, the key to Joss's style is to just sell it as if it's normal, to, to, to ground it in reality and not send it up. And, you know, I, I don't think that the difference between the movie and the TV series is so much that the actors are better, because, I mean, they had Rudger Hauer, man. I mean, they had some really good actors. It was direction, and Joss was not in control of the direction, and they decided they tried for a style of sending it up almost like it was farce, and it just doesn't work. And I just, I, I would have loved to have been in Joss's house coming home from that set, because he would just be like, God! Ah, you know. um, but yeah, I mean, it was just, it w in a way, it was very easy, because you just, just get your lines right, and say it normally, and it's hilarious. You don't have, you just, just, just be normal, man, yeah. I think that there was a cadence to his language and the way he writes. So it's almost like, you know, it's almost like a song or memorizing poetry or even, you know, kind of like Shakespeare. I think a lot of people have, you know, uh, drawn a parallel between, a, a loose parallel between <laughs> those two <laughs> writing styles. But yeah, it was, it was in a way very easy, like James was saying, to memorize because it just had, it had a certain cadence to it. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. It definitely felt very theatrical. And I remember watching a couple of scenes, actually, that you and I had done <clears throat> and expecting, oh, man, this is, you know, I know it's just beat, but just right in here and just cut. <laughs> yeah. cut. Cut for TV. We can't, that's too much of a pause. We're going to bring that in. But the rhythm of the speech and the language is just very obvious. Um, also, like on a, on a lot of films or television, they'll tell you, look, if you can come up with a different way of saying this that feels more natural to you, go for that. <laughs> Not on Buffy. <laughs> Not on Buffy. No. no. Uh, James, you missed a comma. Uh, yeah. Take two. And we didn't come up with one word. It was all, like, if a conjunction was not correct, we'd go back and pick that up, so. Yeah, yeah we've, we've gotten yeah. the question before of, you know, did you ever improvise any of your lines? It's, no, <laughs> not, didn't dare. Yeah. All right, what's your name? Good afternoon. My name is Christine. Hi, Christine. Hello. This question is for the character of Spike. Astronauts or cavemen? <laughs> it's not going to be astronauts. Astronauts are very small. They've got to fit inside the capsule. So it's of course this is cavemen. The cavemen are very large, of course. Yeah. Hi guys, my name's Rebecca. Um, I've met also met three fifth or four of the five, there we go, um, of you guys before. Thank you, Nick, for doing the Snoopy dance for me. Um, thank you for doing the Snoopy dance for me five years ago. I appreciate that. It's one of my best memories. Um, this is a question that I, I know that um, some ladies and probably gents in the audience would like to know, James. Um, what does John Barrowman's mouth taste like? John Barrowman's mouth? Violets and sunshine. I, I had heard rumors it tasted like peaches. <laughs> no, I, I don't I, I mean, it up. depends on the time of day, oh, I suppose. Yeah. Hey, nice what's your try. Name? Stop it. My mom. Hi, how are you doing? No. <laughs> My name is Carrie. I actually have a request and a question. Um, she reminded me, Nicholas, can you please do the Snoopy dance for us? The what? Snoopy, Snoopy dance? dance? Snoopy dance. At the end, I'm going to Snoopy dance the shit out of this place. At Will you? Okay, 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 good. Up, 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 yeah. All right, and my other question is, if you could play any other character on the show, who would it be? <laughs> oh, actually, I would want... I, no, actually... <laughs> Dude, that's got deeper meaning, bro. I know. That's oh, got deeper I, meaning. I know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it in therapy. I, I immediately point to Spike for obvious yeah. male reasons. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's hard because... I can't imagine everybody that was in that show being a part of it as I was. I, I, I say Spike because outside of Xander, he was my favorite character on the show, especially with our stuff together. I just thought it was really wonderful. And 
I, and the way I love the way James played it. I just had a kind of a little male crush on him. Uh, by, by little, I masturbated a lot to James Marsters. <laughs> But then again, it's like I would, I would be, I would, I would also be. I would say yesterday that that I really liked Emma's breasts, so I would be Emma so that I could just look at my breasts a lot in the mirror. So, but in terms of acting, it would have been Spike. In terms of looking at breasts, it probably would have been Emma or Claire. Uh, how many, how many children do we have in the audience today? <laughs> They're not children anymore. Okay. I actually okay. got to, um, part of the way I got on the show was um, I did a casting workshop with Lonnie Hammerman, and she brought in uh, scenes from the show, and I got to be Spike yeah. in the scene, and it was awesome, but her note was, ah, you need to be more dangerous. More what? Dangerous. Oh. I wasn't okay, quite let, dangerous in that. Okay, let, yeah, let me, let me, okay, dangerous. Got let, it. let me got take it. everything out of my pockets first. Hang right. on, I'll yeah. get to Hold danger. On. I gotta take my watch off. I would definitely be Clem. I would definitely. Clem I'll got more Clem. female attention than anyone on the set. Girls would just sit in his lap and play with his ears all day long. <laughs> we remember my days on set very differently. <laughs> I do, I do remember. Yes. No, they, they loved the ears. I was, in, I was in heaven and luckily the makeup covered my fanboy squeeing that was happening as Allison would come over and play with the ears, and then Emma would come over and play with the ears, and then Sarah would come over and play with the ears, and then I would play with my own ears. <laughs> I would earsturbate. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. I've, I've enjoyed all of your work. Um, I have, it, it, this is a two-part, I, I can't try to embarrass you because I embarrassed my daughter yesterday when I told Nicholas that he was on my list. And yeah, then she was like, he, he is on all of our lists. I know, right, right? But this is a two part. First, I want to know what's the biggest prank that you played on each other. And then James, I would love it. I know it's from Angel, but if you would say, wee little puppet man. You're a wee little puppet man. I love that. Uh, as far as pranks go, uh, uh, the first, the second episode I did, uh, I got to shoot for a full week, and it was right around Christmas time. And again, Allison loved messing with the ears, so on my last day of shooting before the little break, the makeup guy, when they took, took me out of makeup, and there was a little Christmas party, and they took me out and they took the ear and they messed with the edge so it looked like it had been ripped off, and they covered it in fake blood and put it in a Christmas present. Yes. Oh. And they made a huge deal out of presenting it to her, I think thinking that she would be like, oh my god, gross. And no, she was like, ah, oh, this is awesome, and was playing with it, with the blood. We didn't, uh, we were, we had a line producer named Gareth Davies that did not want any fun at all. He just, he wanted to make our day, which we usually didn't, we would shoot for 16 hours. The only thing I ever did on a set was the pilot of Kitchen Confidential. John Cho and I had some time off, so we wrapped Cooper's car, rather Cooper's car, in toilet paper. And I mean, that's that's just it. I mean, we didn't. That's we just did not have time, and we didn't want want to be yelled at. You know, sometimes Joss would be kind of like in a playful mood. Sometimes he would not be in a playful mood. He just kind of wanted to keep the the, the, the set copacetic. Um, I was pants one by, once by Sarah, um, and I wasn't wearing underwear. So that, <laughs> so that, I mean, that's, yeah. that's we, season one. We were known around Los Angeles as Buffy the Weekend Slayer. <laughs> because we would, most shows would go 12 hours, and they cut it at 12 hours. Because after 12 hours, you have to pay the crew double. It's called golden time. And, but Buffy, because we had stunts, computer effects, makeup effects, we had every element going on at all times. We would bust past 12 hours every day. 12 hours was unheard of. That was, we never went just 12. It was 14, 16, sometimes 20 hours a day. So um, there was not a lot of time for pranks, unfortunately. People just wanted to try to get the pages. Uh, and also, I was even more boring than anyone else. Like, at least you would joke. Oh, yeah. You know, like if they cut, if they, if they, after cut, then you'd say something funny. Whereas me, 
Like, I finally went to Joss one time, and I said, I'm never in the highlight reel that you show <laughs> at the cast party, where everyone's being so funny. And why don't you like me? And he's like, no, I like you fine. It's just you're boring. <laughs> after the word cut, like, after the word action, it's like someone just released an animal from a cage. But, if, but after I yell cut, you do the same thing every time. You, you check to see if you're on your mark, <laughs> and then you go back to your set. And back to your chair, and you take out your script, and you study your lines. And that's all you ever do, Jane. So that's all I ever do. Professionalism. It's know. overrated. <laughs> Boring. Yeah. Hi, I'm Julia, and I'd love to hear your best Joss Whedon moment. When he recognized me at the Pasadena airport once. <laughs> There's an airport in Pasadena. Burbank, Pasadena, okay. same thing. John, the Bob Hope. Bob Hope, Bob Hope, yeah. I, I saw, I was waiting. Uh, I was waiting in the baggage claim area for my in-laws to come in, and he came off a flight. I was like, and he waved to me, and I, was, I got very excited. <laughs> wow. My favorite moment, when, when I got on the show, um, Joss had not planned for Spike to be like a romantic vampire. Uh, he always used to say, I don't like that Anne Rice stuff, <laughs> you know? Because for him... Vampires are supposed to be a metaphor for all of the things that you overcome in adolescence. So that's why we were ugly when we were biting people. He didn't want it to be romantic. Uh, and he got talked into one romantic vampire character, and that was Angel. He didn't think of it, but his David Greenwald, his writing partner at the time, thought of that. And he said, okay, I'll give you one. And then Angel took off like a shot, and they were going to give him his own show. Uh, but it was absolutely opposite of what he, his original idea for the show was. And then, then I came along and it worked out so that, you know, I was, a, I was being perceived as a romantic character on his show, which was really dangerous to his theme. And I remember early on, he backed me up against a wall and he said, I don't care how popular you are. You are dead. You are dead. You are dead. <laughs> and I was just like, man, it's your football, dude. Whatever. So, <laughs> yeah. oh my that worked out well for him. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Monique. Um, I have two questions. One's for Nicholas Brendan and one's for James Marsters. Okay, Nicholas. Did you know that something about, uh, something you said about shawarma it, on your like first day of production actually made it into Avengers? I, I did. I, yeah, I found out. Um, it was actually a teacher's pet. So I just had some a falafel on the way into work, so I went into Joss's office and was just ranting about shawarma because I just didn't understand it. I said it was in the, I just, it was just lewd meat. I just didn't get it. So then Joss put it in Teacher's Pet, and it, it was brought to my attention that I think Downey Jr. said that, that he and Joss had a meeting at the end, and they said that it needs a punch-up at the end, and that Robert said that he and Joss came up with it together. And I'm like, fucking Downey, you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> and we both live in Venice, too. You know, and I'm like, what a dick. And then Joss did say that, no, I had come up with that line. So I just, now every time, I know a lot about, about Donnie that people shouldn't know. But, uh, <laughs> but no, I was just like, uh, I, was, I was stoked. I mean, I didn't see the Avengers. I, I'm done, though. I'm a bad, I'm, I know. <laughs> I listen, here's, here's the thing. I'm just not. I'm it's not really, a, really good. I don't, I'm not a superhero guy. I, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm really not. I, I, I wish that, that I were. I'm just not. I'm a, I'm a kid who loved, who loved baseball. As you know, I mean, I was a baseball player, and I see like, um, like independent movies, pretty much. You know, and I love Joss, and I felt really bad. I did. I was like, I'll see it this week. I'll see it this week. And, you know, and I just. Well, the shawarma line was genius. So I think, yeah, yeah take credit for it, own it, and Thank we all you. love you. Thank you. Okay. And James, this is actually a question I got from some friends of mine on a fan fiction website. Uh -oh. I shouldn't tell you right now, I'm Team Spike. I'm a spuffy shipper all the way. So uh, my question is, um, did you have to learn how to express yourself and convey the character of Spike, or did it just come naturally to you? Uh, very, very naturally. Uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, um, I, I, was, I was in a relationship that was very successful romantically, so to speak. And so I just felt like the dude, you know, at that time in my life. And um, 
uh, I also, I had just gotten off of doing a Macbeth in Seattle, and had gotten very comfortable. The thing is, is like, you have to, you, when you play a character uh, who hurts people, it can be difficult, like, the, 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 the center of Spike in the beginning was that he hurts people and kills them, but he feels great doing it. And if you're going to do that honestly, you really have to find that place in yourself where you could believe that to be true. And that, when I did Macbeth, really tripped me up. Um, and I, because I'm used to feeling guilty about hurting people. But then when I did Macbeth, I, I started reading about um, warriors and what psychologically what they go through. And apparently, one of the big things that, that trips up people who come back from war is the fact that it's actually fun to kill someone. And they have to live with the guilt of their own emotional reaction to that. But it, that it's a very natural animal reaction uh, to that experience. And uh, so I, during the play, I, I, I worked on that really hard until I could kind of vicariously get to that place and, and, and feel that rush when, I, when I'm killing someone. It, so, it sounds so strange. But luckily, I'd already kind of gotten that before uh, I auditioned for Spike. So I was able to just really run with that. That's such a weird answer. And I'm uncomfortable. You made me uncomfortable. <laughs> what a, you don't know. I, I don't have anything. I have this. No way. No. Hi, I'm Carrie. I wanted to ask all of you, um, do you read any fan fiction? And if so, who's your favorite pairing? I once made the mistake of reading some Spike Clem slash fan fiction. <laughs> it has been indelibly burned into my brain ever since. I cannot get it out. Um, I haven't had a chance to read Glory fan fiction, but send it my way, and I will. I would like to. No way in heck. <laughs> no way. And I, I think that it's fabulous that it's written. I mean, what, what, uh, what artists are trying to do is get a reaction from the audience and to interact with the audience. And when the audience actually starts creating their own art in response to what you've done, that's kind of like the best thing that can possibly happen. <laughs> but no way. <laughs> No. Uh, I've heard about no. some Xander and Giles stuff. <laughs> but you know, when it happens in real life, you just don't want to read about it, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's never as good. No, it's not. It just pales in comparison to the real thing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, Loki in the house. Hello. Hey. Um, I'm Ashley, and two things. First, what was the hardest episode or scene for you and Bucky emotionally? Like, which one did you have to, like, really psych yourself up for and go for? Probably, I, the, probably, like, it probably, like, the, the attempted rape of, of Buffy in the pack. That thing was kind of weird. Because, uh, like, typically it's, like, I, I don't take on the emotion of me. Like, to me, acting is I'm pretending to be somebody else. And there are a lot of different ways of acting, a lot of uh, ways to kind of bring out your own inner turmoil. But I, I could pretty much leave it at when I was done with it, then that was that particular part of my brain. But when it got, because I, then I played a rapist on private practice, too. When it gets into something like that, where it's, where it's physical with a woman, uh, I, that's, I have a hard time with that. Yeah. Uh, the, um, the, the thing about <laughs> working for Joss Whedon, um, like, if you're doing a movie, you can read the script beforehand, and you can decide if you want to do that project or not. And oftentimes, I'll read a script, and I'll say, I don't want to go through that. And no, I don't want to audition. When you do a television series, once you've filmed the pilot, you pretty much know what you're going to be asked to do week to week, because basically, most shows are the same story. It's boring. That's why they're boring. But with Joss, you never know what you're going to be asked to do. You're contractually obligated to do whatever you're told, but you have no idea week to week what that's going to be. And that, uh, like Nick, um, when it came to that bathroom scene, uh, no one asked me if I wanted to do that. If I, if I see that on television, I turn it off before I break the television. If I know that that's in a movie, I don't go to see that movie. Um, I don't like that stuff. 
Um, yeah, so I remember I, I told the writer as I was coming onto the set, man, sometimes you don't understand what you're putting us through. You don't really get that we have to actually go through this emotionally. Uh, and, you know, that, the, thing, the other thing is, is that in that scene, you know, the writers were doing something very brave every week. They were, they were taking their most painful day, the day that they were humiliated or hurt or that they hurt someone for no good reason, and the day that they regret in their life, and then slap fangs on top of that and tell the whole world about their pain. So it was a sustained act of bravery from the, from the writing staff. And there was a very good reason for that scene. Um, but I had to do it. And uh, it sent me into therapy, <laughs> which was a good thing. <laughs> As it turns out, I got a lot happier after, you know, going through therapy. So, in, in, you know, it all turned out fine. But on that day, I, that was the hardest day of my professional life to this day. Yeah. So, anyway. Well, they, well, uh -huh. they um, yeah. the, the scene after in the, in the crypt, they added like three weeks later. Because I think they had done a cut of the show and went, whoa. And the scene between you and I in the, in the crypt, they added later to try to give a little comedic and also to sort of soften spikes or give, give something because it, it just, I think it came across a little harsher than they had even anticipated. Yeah, I know. They told me that. Like, we didn't think it was going to be that harsh. And I was like, why? Yeah. Read the scene, <laughs> man. <laughs> okay, so this is for James Marsters. Um, good afternoon. I'm, yes, I'm, I'm Mimi. Um, hey, Mimi. And I was wondering what it was like from going from, as Spike, from going from a character that was very against Buffy and just generally wanted to kill her um, to somebody who became very interested and eventually started fighting for the good guys. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I prefer playing villains. Villains are really fun because... Like, I got to play a few heroes, uh, and it, as it turns out, heroes are horrible. Like, when you're a hero, you're always running from A to B, <laughs> and you're always trying to save everybody, and you're always feeling guilty that you can't save every single person, and you're in emotional turmoil and everything. And then when you're, when you're a villain, you just lurk. And you wait for the hero to run by, sweating and worrying if he's saving everybody and you pop them in the head and you go home, man. And, and it's a lot, it's just, it's just easier to play the villain. Um, and also, I, I, um, I grew up a punk rocker, um, so there's a, there's a piece of me that if someone is powerful, I really want to tear that down because I think everyone's equal, you know? So uh, Sarah was great, but she was powerful because she was Buffy. So everyone has to be nice to Sarah. Hello, Sarah. How are you today? You know, and and but when they called action, when I was the villain, I could mess with Sarah. I could, yeah, you know. Uh, and then when I fell in love with her, that was gone. And I was like, oh man, I have to look. Oh, oh I got to be nice to her all the time now. Uh, but then it was great. They could let me go on Angel, and I could just go mess with him. Yeah. <laughs> well, as a as a villain, you get to say great lines like mewling quim. <laughs> Heroes don't get to say those lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get to say Bitka. Bitka. <laughs> All right. I think we're nearing the end. We want to get the Snoopy dance in, but yes. do you guys want to be in the back of a group selfie that we're going to take up here? Yeah? Okay. Can you come take it? Absolutely. All right. So everybody stand up and, and, and uh, you know, do something crazy. Where are we? Right. Get right here. Right oh, here. right here. Okay. Right here. One more time for everybody. Good.
Paige Hurstberg, Claire Kramer, James Leary, Nicholas Brennan, and, and James Marsters. Thank you guys so much. It, the show's been off the air for 11 years, and I find it amazing that we, that they're still, thank you guys for being fans. You guys are amazing. And if anybody wants this avocado, it's gonna be right here. Enjoy it. Get it before it turns brown. <laughs>